Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. In today's film we're going to be looking at um, this little camera here, nice little beauty. This is the Olympus 35DC and this is the auto version of the 35RD. So this is the 35DC. The RD is quite a, a popular and um, we're getting to be a very expensive camera actually. This is somewhat rarer. Um, there were fewer of these made and it is auto only um, there's no manual override on it it's a rangefinder um, so you can focus it quite accurately and these were introduced by Olympus in the early 70s I think these date from about 1971 very popular cameras but like I say this is a somewhat rarer version uh, than the RD and this has the same lens as the RD and really that's the reason why you'd buy one of these. This has a 40mm uh, 1.7 so 1.7 is quite a low number so that's what's regarded as being a fast lens. Uh, it is a very fast lens and here we can see the photocell. Here we can see the, uh, the ISO setting and you adjust the ISO on this camera by turning this out of column at the very front you can see it changes and it goes from I think it's 800 all the way down to 80 so 80 to 800 today we're going to be putting in a roll of 200 so I'm actually going to say it's 160 because I quite like overexposing a little bit. So on the front of the camera here we have a viewing window. This is our viewfinder. And it has a coupled rangefinder. This is the rangefinder window over here. This is the self-timer lever. You push this down to set the self-timer. On the bottom we have a battery compartment. This uses the mercury cells. So I'm running it on a wean cell. A hearing aid batteries. We have a push in to rewind when we get to the end of the roll. We have a tripod bush and this is how we open the back with this little lever at the bottom here. On the top plate, turn it round so you can see it a bit easier. We have obviously the film advance lever. We have a frame counter, a shutter release button, uh, we have a way of setting up the guide number for our flash. Um, people don't really need to use guide numbers anymore, but that's something we will cover in our flash episode. Hot shoe on the top. And our rewind. So we're rewinding the film back into the cassette when we finish taking the pictures. On the back, we have a battery test. Just to make sure that the battery's okay. And this one also has um, a backlight control. So this is for if you're shooting, say, into the sun. Obviously, if you're shooting a portrait with the sun behind somebody, um, the face and the front bit facing you would be in shadow. When you push on this button, rather than metering over the whole area of the viewfinder, it meters over the, um, the frame line area, so you can get far more accurate readings. Hold this button and that will remember... Uh, the exposure setting, recompose and take your picture. So that's quite a useful little feature actually on this. Inside the viewfinder, I don't expect that you can see it, but on the bottom of the viewfinder, there's a scale that shows you the shutter speeds and the apertures. So it tells you what it's selected. So you're not completely in the blind. And obviously it goes from uh, f1.7 all the way down to f16 and the shutter speeds go from a 15th of a second to a 500th so it's uh, quite a highly specified camera it's not particularly heavy but it is quite well built it is quite a nice little camera and anything i would say with these is you do need a lens cap because the, there's no on off button you kind of save the battery by putting a cover over the uh, the sensor it knows and you've got one on because it's, it locks the shutter and when you 
take it off, obviously the shutter fires then. Okay, to load one of these little beauties, as I said the shutter, uh, the back opening release button is down here. So we pull that down towards me and that releases the back. And you can see the inside, there's a pressure plate, a take up spool, the sprockets. We'll see where the film runs across and this is where your new film will go in. Is it going to sit there for me? Just so today I'm loading this one with an out of date film. And this is uh, been stored in the fridge. And this is uh, Agra 200 Agra Vista, the colour prints. It's another C41 film. Yeah, C41. DX marked, but that isn't going to apply with this camera. So, goes in this way around, leader over to the right, and that just slots into there very nicely. And pull that across the film gate, and we feed it into the slots on the take up spool. So, we just feed that into there, and wind it on until the second top row of sprockets is engaged and then we can close the back just push it shut like that my usual tip is just to take up the tension on this one so that as you wind the film through the camera See that the film is going through the camera and that's it ready for the first exposure. Very simple, very quick. We put the cap back on. I will demonstrate the cell time. I probably should have done that before I put the film in it. So you push this lever down, uh, take the cap off, and there's the cell timer. I think the BC just stands for battery check. There we go. And we need to set set the ASA to 160 ISO. But yeah, 40mm 1.7 lens, the same lens as in the RD version. These, if you can find them, are cheaper than the RDs. Obviously the same lens and fully automatic. But they've still got, like I say, a fair old range. Shutter speed from a 15th to a 500th. And it's got the full range, it's got the 250, 125, 60th, etc. And an aperture from 1.7 to 16. So, more than capable camera. Up to 800 ASA, so you could push some uh, HP5 or Tri-X. And, uh, yeah, very nice, very portable. Easy to slip into a coat pocket or anything. Yeah, very nice little camera. Thank you very much for watching, hope you found it interesting. Hope to see you in the next one.